It's time for Morning Today with Jonathan Mark on AM 1480 WLEA. Oh, yes, it is time for Mornings at 8. It's about oh, seven minutes after 8 o'clock on a Thursday morning. Thursday, practically Friday. One more little day, and there's the weekend, and uh, there you go. Now, Brian, on your news, you had a story about the, the governor assigned a bill raising uh, the uh, age of where you can buy uh, cigarettes from 18 to, to 21, right? Yes. So, uh, and vaping products. So it's now uh, 21 years old. And I'm kind of thinking here, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to start any trouble here, but if, if you're in the military, there are a lot of people in the military, let's say 19, 20 years old, 18 years old. So it's okay if you're in the military and you put your life on the line, but you can't buy cigarettes or vaping products. I don't know about that. As I said, I don't want to start any trouble here, but it just seems a little, a little strange. You know, now smoking is bad for your health. I think everybody knows that smoking is really bad for your health. You can't really do anything dumber than smoke, right? Or vaping, but it's your choice, you know? And I don't, I wonder if that applies to people in the military. Actually, it probably does. Uh, I think that's just a little unfair, but that's the way life is. Oh, you know, driving, if you drive around in the evening or the early morning hours when it's still kind of dark, I've noticed that a lot of people have their Christmas decorations up already. And there are a couple of houses right here on 36 that are really nicely done. I mean, really nicely done. Uh, a, a, a number of houses in Almond uh, and probably, you know, I mean, all over. And it adds such a lot to the atmosphere at this time of year. I am seriously, I am seriously into Christmas. Seriously into Christmas. And I, I could probably spend the entire hour talking about Christmas because I think it's a wonderful time of year. It really doesn't get any better than that. And I'm all for it. But I don't know, so, you know, I have worked with people and I know people who really don't like Christmas. And I've never been able to figure that out. It is the best time of year. <clears throat> you can let your imagination just go for it. I mean, if you want to decorate your house outside and inside, just, hey, go for it. You know, I just said, go for it. There's lights and garland and more lights and more garland. Uh, wreaths, maybe more lights. <laughs> the Christmas trees and Christmas music and all that. I am seriously into Christmas. And I always have been. I think, as I said, I think it's a wonderful time of year. And when you're decorating the outside of your house and if somebody's driving down the street and they see your house all like lit up and, you know, all that stuff, it really makes you feel good. I mean, it really makes you feel good. But as I said, some people I've met or worked with don't like Christmas. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And then there's a criticism that, well, you know, it's too commercialized. Well, what isn't? I mean, really? Okay. I don't know. Every, everything is. So why not Christmas too? I don't see anything wrong with that as long as you remember why we have Christmas in the first place. With that in mind, you know, do it. Shop. Decorate. All that stuff. And uh, I don't know. My, my love for Christmas goes back when, when I was really, really, I mean, really young. And not just to the presents, but the whole, the whole ambiance, the whole atmosphere of decorating and the lights and all that stuff. Oh, well, anyway, now I read a column by somebody, and I don't remember who it was. It was last week, so you'd think I'd remember. Anyway, he was talking about the Christmas creep. In other words, the season starts earlier and earlier every year. <clears throat> but, you know, as I said, I don't see anything wrong with that. If you can't have a good time, let your imagination go, and be loose and have fun at Christmas, man, when can you? You know? So, I don't know, I am all for Christmas. Uh, yeah. Uh, however, apparently not everybody is. I have this story here. There's a family in San Antonio, Texas, and they live in the lakeside at Canyon Springs subdivision in San Antonio. And the wife is eight months pregnant. So she wanted to put her Christmas decorations up early this year. <laughs> they include a snowman, some reindeer, and a Santa, it says, hanging from a helicopter. Probably the word that should be dangling from a helicopter. Anyway, which is kind of weird right there. Now, who would think of Santa and a helicopter? But anyway, so the lady says, I feel kind of heavy when she would at eight months pregnant. 
So the earlier we can put up the decorations, the better. Because probably in two more weeks, I'm not going to be able to do all this. So they got a letter from the Neighborhoods Homeowners Association telling them to take down their decorations because it's too early. And the letter was from the Diamond Association Management and Consulting Firm informing them of the, the violation of their rules. So they have ordered them to take down their decorations. And the family is protesting, and who can blame them? And the lady says, I just found it crazy, especially when they didn't give us a time, like when is the right time to put up decorations? So their neighbors are joining in this protest, and uh, there's a neighbor of theirs who has, uh, let me see, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> he has a couple of penguins in his front yard. Pe penguins in San Antonio is probably really out of place, but anyway, he has penguins in his front yard and a very large Merry Christmas ornament in his front yard. And the guy says, their neighbor, these are the holidays, this is what we do. So the homeowners association isn't backing down, and neither is this, is, is this family. So I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm thinking just in order to be fair, if you live in, uh, let me see, if you're a member of the Neighborhoods Homeowners Association, when you move in, wouldn't you have to sign some kind of agreement or contract or something along those lines? So probably I would imagine that this would be covered in their homeowners agreement contract thing there. So you'd think that when they moved in, they would know this. As I said, the Homeowners Association is acting like a Scrooge, no, no question there, but the homeowners should have read the fine print, I think, in their agreement. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it should be interesting to see how that works out. Okay. Hey, Saturday. <clears throat> it begins the uh, big game season for deer and bear right here in the southern zone. So you can use firearms. And that begins Saturday at sunrise. And each, you know, I, I just, I just, I just thought of that. When I moved here, I, 1970 originally, the first time, I, I moved here twice. Um, in 19, a lot more people hunted. Hunting season was huge. I mean, everybody hunted in 1970. And as the years have gone on, fewer and fewer people hunt. And I don't, I don't, I don't know why that is. I have no idea why that is. But anyway, uh, each year, about 85% of the state's 550,000 licensed hunters take part. And the season, as I said, starts Saturday and it continues through December 8th. And the number of deer killed during this season accounts for nearly 6 in 10 on the total statewide deer harvest and about 30 to 60% of the bear, according to the DEC. Now, uh, <clears throat> The, uh, the DEC says uh, the regular firearm season for deer in the southern tier, or the southern zone, draws hundreds of thousands of New Yorkers afield each year to hunt big game. It's a cherished annual tradition in New York State. However, as I said, probably not as much as it was in 1970 and all that. But anyway, uh, New York's deer and bear populations are tremendous resources that provide more than 11 million pounds of quality locally grown organic meat to families across the state. So that's that, and the bow hunting season in the Southern Tier started October 1st, and it ends tomorrow, Friday. And following the regular deer and bear seasons in the Southern Zone, late bow hunting and muzzleloading seasons will run from December 9th through December 17th. Uh, hunters taking part in these special seasons must have a hunting license, duh, and either bow hunting or muzzleloading privileges. Now, let me see, in the northern zone, well, that's, that's, that's the northern zone. Anyway, so that's that. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I have noticed, I, I, I don't know why, but years ago, you would see, uh, especially uh, pickup trucks, um, with deer uh, strapped across the hood or, you know, on the back or something like that. You saw that all over the place during hunting. You really don't see that much anymore. And, and I, I don't know, I don't know why. Do you, you, you want to say something right? It's those darn kids. They're on their cell phones, Jonathan. <laughs> That's right. They got their the, they got their noses under cell phone like this, and they're really not hunting anymore. At least, if you have a cell phone in your hand, you know you have it up to your face. Do not hunt. Okay, no, <laughs> no texting while hunting. Very, very important. No texting while hunting. And speaking of deer, boy, 
I've never seen anything like this, and probably few people have. have. <clears throat> but this was in uh, in Michigan. This guy's out uh, five days before rifle season for white-tailed deer, and he's out there with his girlfriend, and they see a three-antlered deer. Three antlers. Normally, you have a, uh, an antler on one side and then an antler on the other side. This deer... And it's posted uh, where? On the guy's uh, Facebook page. Uh, you can also find it on Fox News. Uh, but this white-tailed deer has three antlers. And I never saw anything like that. And you can see a photograph of this thing. I mean, clearly it has three antlers. It's really weird. But apparently a local veterinarian <clears throat> confirmed that the deer is healthy and that the abnormality may have occurred when it was an embryo. And he called the antlers a one in a million thing. I guess so. It's a strangest looking. It's the strangest looking thing. You know what cuts down on the deer population sometimes? Uh, mm, what? Us radio people driving to work here on Ashball Hill. Oh. <laughs> did you? Did that ever happen to you? Uh, I, no, I never hit one on on Ashball Hill, but I see them all the time. Yeah. I mean, all the time. I think our former morning man, Gary Gray, uh, had an incident once here on the hill with some deer. Really? I what? was heading to a meeting in Hartsville, and this was about 10 years ago as a reporter, and uh, heading down the other side of Ashball Hill, and a bunch mm -hmm. of deer ran out in front of me, and I swerved, and it, it was almost like a you know one of those slow motion swerves. Yeah. And it just brushed up against the side of them, but didn't hurt them. Wow. And I was like, <clears throat> now, you know, anybody who knows this, anybody who lives here knows this, but uh, once you, if you see a deer crossing the road in front of you and it's on the other side of the road, well, now I can speed up again. Oh, no. Oh, no. Because chances are there's another one right behind it. So if you see a deer crossing, everybody know. I, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but if you see one deer, chances are there's another one. And then the another way, one. Yeah. And then probably another one. So you don't really know. As a matter of fact, I saw two this morning on Ashball Hill. Just slowly going across the road, slowly, you know. Uh, I bragged for years. That's what happens when you brag. That's what happens. I had never hit a deer in all the years I lived here. I never hit a deer, ever. And I thought, wow, that's pretty good driving, boy. You really know what you're doing. One day I'm going to work in Bath. It's around maybe, oh, four o'clock in the morning oh. uh, on 86. <laughs> that's right. No, I didn't hit one. I hit two deer at the same time. And how I don't, it, it, it was really, I'm driving down 86, going to Bath. And these two deer jump out of nowhere. I don't know where, I don't know where they, it was, you know, it was dark, right? So these two deer are right smack in the middle of my lane. And it was snowy. So I'm not going to go around these deer and I hit the two deer at once. It was almost like uh, uh, a seven-eight split in bowling, right? So I hit one with the with my right headlight, and the other with my left headlight. Bang! Two at once, and one wound up in the median, and the other wound up in the side of the road. Were they insured? I don't know. Uh, they probably needed a little bit of insurance, I would imagine. So, so I slowed down and looked up, and they they were fine. I mean, the both of them got up and off they went. But I hit two at once after never having hit a deer in my yep. life. It was, that's the way it goes. As I said, you brag and that's what happens. Okay, let me see. Uh, hmm. Oh, I have, oh, insurance, insurance, auto insurance, <laughs> deer insurance. Who knows? Everybody needs, you never know what's going to happen. That's just what I said. Everybody needs insurance. And where is the best place you can possibly go for insurance? Um, um, hmm. Oh, that's right. The Ryan agencies. Hey, and they're right here. They have offices in Hornell, Jasper, and Wellsville, and they know all about insurance. Right? That's what they do. They are professionals, and they have all these insurance companies at the, their disposal, and they'll find the best rates for you. You can think of them as your personal, your very own personal insurance shopper. That's what they do. Uh, they offer sound, unbiased advice. They're friendly. They're, they really are friendly. They're local. They are the Ryan Agencies. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles, 
Here's Eddie Garcia. Checking games a note in the NBA. The matchup of the night had the Rockets beating the Clippers 102 to 93. Houston's now eight and three on the season. They were led by James Harden's 47 points. Celtics are off to a nine and one start, best record in the league. They've won nine straight with a 140-133 win over the Wizards. All five starters were in double digits in that win for Boston. The Lakers had no trouble beating the Warriors 120 to 94. As a matter of fact, they didn't even need star Anthony Davis, who sat out the game with a shoulder injury. They improved to nine and two on the season while Golden State falls to 2-10 and 10 on the year. The Raptors beat the Trailblazers 114-106. to 106. The defending champs are now 8-3 and three on the season. Timberwolves topped the Spurs 129-114 to 114, while the Magic beat the 76ers 112-97. Joel Embiid did not play for Philadelphia. He sat out the game with a sore knee. College basketball, battle of ranked teams. Number 16, Ohio State easily beat number 10, Villanova 76-51. Wins for number 4, Louisville, and number 11, Texas Tech. I'm Charles Payne, and this is the Fox Business Report. Stocks falling as investors sifted through a slew of earnings reports today, with the Dow falling 19 points, the Nasdaq down 49, S&P 500 down 3. And shares of plant-based meat company Beyond Meat were far from sizzling today on Wall Street, falling over 22 percent, marking the end of Beyond Meat's lockup period. For the first time since its IPO, early investors can sell the stock. Now, despite the sell-off, Beyond Meat reported a much bigger profit than expected for its third quarter. Shares of Mattel spiking after hours, around 18 percent after the toy maker posted better than expected earnings for the third quarter as newer models boosted demand for its flagship Barbie brand and the launch of dolls based on Korean pop sensation BTS lifted international sales. Mattel also announcing it will be hiring a new chief financial officer in the wake of a whistleblower investigation relating to its accounting practices. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Hilary Barsky, invested in you. Prescription products require an online physician consultation and are only available if the physician determines a prescription is appropriate. Subscription required. See website for full details and important safety information. Hey guys, good news. The outrageously expensive little blue pill is now generic, which means you can get the prescription medication to treat ED at affordable prices. And Hims makes it extra affordable. And right now, get your first online visit totally free when you go to 4 slash joy. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, 4 slash joy. F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash joy. Today at Simmons, Rockwell, Nissan, in Horseheads, and Hornell, New York, you'll find brand new 2019 Nissan Sentra SV models equipped with 16-inch alloy wheels, rear monitor, push-button ignition, and cruise control for just $15,099. Shop Simmons, Rockwell, Nissan, in Horseheads, or Hornell, Simmons-Rockwell.com. And here we are. You know, uh, you can't miss it. The public phase of the impeachment hearings is underway in Washington. And that'll be going on for, oh, like forever, probably. Okay, fine. Um, Very interesting. Uh, It's got to be pretty stressful, right? It's got to be pretty stressful for everyone. And yes, this is Thursday. So yesterday, the uh, pet industry, uh, pet partners worked with the Pet Industry Joint Advisory Council to bring emotional support dogs, they were available at the Hart Senate Office Building and the Rayburn House Office Building. So anybody who's taking part in those hearings or staffers or something like that could stop into the Hart Senate Office Building or the Rayburn Hart House Office Building and have a little quality time with an emotional support dog. I'm not making this up. So anyway... I, the, the, uh, emotional support dogs, a pet therapy, right? Uh, it decreases anxiety. And boy, howdy, there's got to be a bunch of it down there. Provide comfort, and they even lower blood pressure, which has got to be sky high these days. So they have emotional support dogs available in Washington just for the impeachment hearings. All right. And speaking of the impeachment hearings, um, I'm not really the biggest fan of the Democrat contenders for the nomination. I'm really not. That's why, you know, I just said, every time we're thinking about it as a group, uh, I think of the the theme from the Adams family, right? That's what I call them, the Adams family. Well, I don't know. There is at least one who doesn't sound like the other candidates. Tulsi Gabbard, the congresswoman from Hawaii, was interviewed on Breitbart News Daily recently. And she said, I thought this was really interesting. 
The reality is, she said, the reality is that we do not have a nation if we don't have borders. It's a false choice for people to say you're anti-immigrant if you support secure borders. That's just not the case. How do you like that? She said, I think that we can that we can and must have a secure border policy that's effective and works and also reform our immigration system so it works for our country. So how do you like that? Tulsi Gabbard. I, she doesn't sound like the other candidates, I'll tell you that. Wow. And then she's, uh, she said s- something else, and this is pretty interesting too. The promotion of, you know what cancel culture is? Cancel culture is uh, if you don't like someone or what they stand for or the product you're selling or whatever, you, you, they must be silenced, which happens a lot on college campuses, huh? or canceled, or told to shut up, or their, their product or their business boycotted. That is cancel culture. And she says that the promotion of cancel culture and modern American society is a disservice to our country and dangerous because it creates a culture of fear. Now, how do you like that? She says, uh, let me see, I think it's important, again, for both leaders in our country and people to stand up for the right to free speech, to encourage dialogue and discourse and debate around the issues that concern all of us. She calls the promotion of cancel culture, which is embraced by... A whole bunch of people, leftists, Hollywood, elites, all that. She calls it a disservice to our country. I think it's a disservice to our country and, frankly, dangerous to promote this, this cancel culture, because it creates a culture of fear, frankly, for people who want to speak out and who want to share their views and their opinions. Wow, how do you like that? Maybe I'll keep closer tabs on Tulsi Gabbard. I don't think she has much of a chance, but... I think that's, that's, that's a pretty rational, sane thing to say, which these days is pretty rare in Washington. Okay, that's it for this morning's show, and I will see you tomorrow, assuming I don't hit a deer. Bye.